I start my day by watering the plants. I make sure to check them first if they need to be watered. The latest need constantly moist soil so I always water it. And when watering, I make sure I get all up until the end of the soil. I wouldn't see the drain come to the end but I know how many seconds I watered it until it goes until the end because I've been doing this a lot of times already. I don't water them all at once. I have a schedule of plants which I know needed water the most and the plants that could be watered every after two weeks. I give Calatheas and my other prayer plants more water therapy all compared to all my other plants combined because they're kind of finicky. I started collecting rainwater for them also. So fun fact, I use rainwater when I water my plants. Now this is a special segment on how I water my Calatheas and my other prayer plants. I make sure all the soil gets moist because they love consistently moist soil. I also make sure that no water will be kept sitting under them because they also don't like it. It's hard to maintain and take care of them, of prayer plants in general, but it's rewarding when you see new growth. And after this, after the watering session, I trim my plants. I cut yellowing leaves to make way for new growth. This is kind of depressing to other plant moms, but for me, it's just a circle of life. It will show that they change foliage and will give me new life after I cut, trim, and remove the dying parts. It's normal. Don't be sad when you see yellowing leaves. Because of course, if you give them the right one that they need, they'll surely give you growth. This is kinda sad for my other Calatheas because I know that I'm doing something wrong if my Calatheas get sad. So now, the sad part is be trimmed. It's kinda sad because big leaves were trimmed. But eventually, to give me new growth. I just have to be patient. Maybe just because I don't give them the enough humidity they need. So I guess I have to buy four humidifiers around my room to surround this Calathea corner. Because when you remove one leaf of this Calathea, it's kind of big. So it's kind of depressing if you see a big leaf yellowing. But it's nature. So here you'll see how much leaves I trimmed and for me to stay positive I know that all of these were grown back because it's room for growth. Now my favorite part of the day is unpacking the new ones I bought. So these are the herbs I bought because my basil is crying for always trimming so I have to buy new basil and new herbs. This one is for my plant mama selling stocks and here the most exciting part of the day is to show the new plant I bought so come with me as I give this plant a new home so when we homing plants number one goal is not to repot it exactly immediately the day you get it. So here, I'm just rehoming it into a new basket. So I hope this will love the new environment I'm going to give her. It's another fuzzy plant, but I'm keeping my hopes up. I'll give this one a new home, a better home. A home where Calatheas and prayer plants are taken care of. So I'm done with them. Let's give them the therapy they need. So, 
humidity for my humi for my humidity loving plant. Also, another tip is to use neem oil. It's good for your plants. It will keep pests away in a very organic way. But I'm still struggling with pests. Maybe I need a stronger one. So here you go is where I repot these herbs I bought. They are outdoor plants so they can manage the stress. Of repotting after the rehoming so I'm using my eco pot available in my shop to plant my herbs using it in a hanging basket because I don't have space for floor plants or tabletop plants so I gotta hang these herbs so at least when they trail down I could cut them and use them for my cooking Remember when repotting, you pot up, not pot down. So I hope you get that what that means, okay? Use a bigger pot when repotting. Next thing I do is check my propagations. So these are my trailing photos. I cut them and propagate them so that it will grow longer. So these ones have no roots yet. So I'll put it back. And another one over there is another propagation station. Leaves are kind of droopy because it was just propagated but I know it will give me new life. Last part of the day is to water my Vanda orchids. I do that every day. I spray them water because they don't have soil and the only thing that will keep them alive is that mist. So I have to miss that every day, twice a day, anytime I remember it. So I missed it until the roots get green. So they are on their blooming stage already but it's rainy season so they'll lose flowers again. And will give me new flowers when it's growth season but of course they have to be taken care of. So that's it for today. Thank you. So that is it you guys for the day. It's my day, a day in the life of a plant mama. I hope you enjoyed the video, find it very soothing for plant moms out there, plant moms and plant dads out there. So that is how I take care of my plants. Not on a daily basis but maybe on a plant day, how I water them. I don't water them all at once because I don't have a schedule. I just try to, you know, see if they need water and if they need it and I'll water them. I don't like usually do it one Saturday water everything all at once. No, they have their own schedule. They, they'll tell you if they want water or if they don't like water. And also, I trim them when I see dry leaves. I trim them. That is how you promote growth. So don't be sad when you see dry leaves. That's what I always say. The circle of life. So if you guys are new here, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button and tap the bell on so you get notified every time I post. And also don't forget to follow me on all my social media accounts. It's Instagram and Twitter at Queen Nash Rappi. And if you want to start your plant mama journey, let me help you with that. I sell low maintenance in their plants and check my Facebook page. It's at Plant Mama Tasha. Go start your plant journey with me. See you in my next video. Bye!